Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome to episode 8, which is 8 in German, uh, or Freshly Grounded. Sam has had basically zero sleep and he has zero energy, so am I carrying today's episode on my back? I mean, some would say yes. Um, however, luckily we were joined by a guest, weren't we Sam? Alhamdulillah, we had Josh Lamonica join us today. Josh is Sam's uh, business partner and in uh, in his business ventures um josh also is a um a barber himself and has recently been awarded a barber educator of the year uh, in new york city which is amazing we talk a bit about that um what else do we talk about sam we talk about our usual stuff bro mm. a little bit of business a lot of spirituality and uh we are we, we speak to josh a lot essentially what was the other thing we spoke well, a about? Bit, a we spoke, we spoke a bit about Flat Earth, actually. Flat Earth a little bit. I tried to get it a little bit out of him, but he wasn't playing ball. Yeah, no, he he knows ball. the repercussions oh, yeah. of that if he makes a statement on it. Oh, does he? Yeah. Did you see? I was trying to... Yeah. I wasn't Josh trying to get anything out of him, but, you know, I mean, I thought like... Because um, he, he, I know that he has, a, he has knowledge on it, so I wondered whether he uh, was going to discuss it. We obviously chose, chose not to use wisdom and just shut up about it, which is what I should have done originally. Um, but it was nice. So we, we, did we, we started the podcast with Josh, and then like... Um, some point, maybe like an hour into it, Josh had to leave. Um, but it was nice. It was nice to have Josh on the show, wasn't it? We, we I, I can't remember what now what we discussed, but essentially I felt bad for him. He came in on a not our, not our strongest week. We have got me on a few yeah. hours of sleep. He's not had a lot of sleep himself. We got no red one. Yeah. We got you. You're literally producing it and doing it at the same time, and tough, on man. your social media, and you I don't know what else you've been doing. So it, it probably isn't our best uh, example of freshly grounded. No. He said he enjoyed it though. He so says, he says. Do you not think he enjoyed it? Yeah, of course he did. He loved yeah. it. Yeah, he loved it. He did. Um, he asked us specifically to ask you guys to give feedback and let us know like how you guys found him being on it and if you'd like to see more of him. Yeah, he did. He specifically asked that, so let us know. So basically, what you guys will find is that this episode, I'm having to produce a podcast on my laptop, um, make sure the cameras are all like on and working, and on top of that, um, try to carry conversation. Um, and uh, jo Sam, you've done an amazing job today. Can I just say because you've been absolutely shattered? You've been traveling for the last two days. You've had very little sleep in the last two days. Zero. You had for almost argument's sake, let's just say zero. For argument's sake, we're going to say you've had zero sleep the yeah. last two days, and um, you've still done great. And you've probably uh, you probably carried the podcast. Some would say. <laughs> Did you see the came up yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't so remember funny. saying that. I can vouch for that. So funny. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, uh, all right, this podcast is sponsored by 59, um, 59 Coffee and Juice Bar on Stanhope Road. Um, I love their fresh juices. Uh, I've been quoted to say in the past on the podcast that I love um, their, uh, their exotic. However, I'm now going to change my opinion. And while, whilst exotic is my favorite tasting juice there, my favorite juice is the clean green. Clean and green, yes. The reason being is because it's much better for me. Uh, as, yeah. uh, the exotic is nice and good for me, but the clean green has like uh, celery in it. Um, and other good stuff. Uh, does it have kiwi? No, no. kiwi is that's the exotic. Uh, yeah, but yes, like celery, pineapple. <sighs> that's the exotic again. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> you literally <laughs> described the exotic. The clean green. <laughs> it's got clean green in ingredients. <laughs> it's got clean green ingredients. Uh, check it out if you're ever passing. <coughs> well, <coughs> oh, if you're ever passing, if you're ever passing, <laughs> if you're ever passing uh, Hertfordshire, St Albans. Uh, oh, I'm going to Hertfordshire soon on when? next week on a helicopter ride. Really? Yeah. Oh, and I'm also going inside to just get my hair cut. When are you going on a helicopter ride? Next week in Hertfordshire. Really? Yeah. How have you managed that? Uh, let's just say uh, I'm, I'm a bit of a romantic. <laughs> and me and my wife are going to be going on a helicopter ride. Inshallah, that'd be nice. Here's the thing. We're going over a helicopter ride in London. So we have to wow. drive outside of London Dude. to get on a helicopter in Hertfordshire. And whereabouts, in London, or whereabouts in Hertfordshire? You'd have to no go. idea. Zero. Out, out in the sticks. Yeah. Is uh, this the introduction still? This is still the intro. We always <laughs> So we've done 59. <laughs> yeah. Then we've got Zaha. <coughs> Zaha.com. We've got a whole bunch of new uh, Arabic style hats coming on Zaha.com this coming week. What's that? The dark camo ones? We've got the, uh, we've got the black camo. Black camo. Yeah. I think my personal favourite. Yeah? yeah. We're restocking on black camo. We're restocking on the camo. Restocking on a bunch of hats. We're also bringing in some new hats. Uh, and uh, there's, a, there's a new item we're bringing in, which I'm not going to mention yet, but... Um, baseball bat. <laughs> no, still not the baseball bat. Oh. That's just a modeling thing. Uh, but yeah, it's R.com. Use the code word freshly grounded to get 15% off. Lastly, we brought you by Flavor, F L A V R. Um, let's get into the episode. And welcome 
to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast by best friends Faisal and Sam. Huh? I, welcome, I said welcome to Freshly Grounded. The, no, after that bit. The brand new podcast. And after that bit? My best friends Faisal and Sam. Really? And we're live. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. Right, so th- this is madness because this is the first uh, podcast episode we've done. That uh, in which we we haven't started like first thing in the morning. Normally we f- record on Thursdays, isn't it, Josh? And then we like bang it out in the morning, and we go all the time. And today we've had to. It's like it's three p.m. and we're starting a podcast. We've got no producer. 20, Twenty-five past three. To Twenty-five be past three. We've got no producer, and so I'm like trying to. Pr- I'm gonna have to produce podcast, work on the camera stuff, and also get the conversation going. And on top of all that, Sam, I was sitting at home this morning, and I was thinking, you know, how amazing would it be? If I could do Freshly Grounded, sat next to um, an amazing barber, you know, and eight weeks in, alhamdulillah, we are joined by Josh and Monica. Oh, we are joined by two, aren't we? Sorry? Two amazing barbers, aren't we? Um, yeah, no, I'm joking. I've had, you I've have had to, I've <laughs> basically, throughout the podcast, you'll, you'll notice that he will try and make many, many little jokes. Okay. Um, the, I found the best way of dealing with it is just... <laughs> The best way of dealing with it, just go along with it, pretend it's funny and laugh when he, you know, just go along with it. So he'll, he'll do it throughout. So what you'll actually find, Josh, is that throughout the podcast, um, Sam uses bullying technique, technique. So this is all just a, com- a culmination of self defense and a build up of rage. Welcome, Josh and Monica. To okay, <laughs> great. So my purpose is to uh, combat the both of them yep. between uh, each other. Right. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. So is this live to people right now? This isn't live to people right now. Oh, so this is a yeah. Watch it after. Yeah. So this is a recorded. So we record the audio on the mm. mics that we've got, and then we record okay. the video. And uh, the video. So goes tell up on Josh a little bit about Freshly Grounded. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I so mean, I've been I've been a fan for since the start, obviously, right. and I've been listening, listening that. in. <laughs> one <laughs> I don't know if that's. Uh, I did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I did. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so how, how many have we done? How many? Have, how many have we done? So, we, so this is like seven. <laughs> so this is number eight, right? This is number eight. Yeah. Okay. okay. I did. So, I yeah. did say that at the beginning. Yeah, I mean. Okay. Everything um, cool. Right. I believe. <laughs> Fair it. enough. And what was your favorite episode of, the, of all the ones we've done? Yeah, the last one that I watched. Who's your favorite <laughs> guest? Who's your favorite guest <laughs> been? Yeah. Who's been your favorite who's guest? Slim Bala and you guys. Yeah. And who else have you enjoyed? Lats. Okay, all right. <laughs> I think he's just. He's been watching sh- from the distance. Man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's he's yeah, good on, mean, social listen, yeah, he's on social media. I've been following you guys since the beginning. You know, I'm a I'm a firm follower. You know? So so the podcast essentially goes up on the iTunes podcast app. It goes up on Android, uh, and then it goes up on YouTube. <laughs> a lot of people watch it on YouTube. Um, I think the most kind of downloads it gets is from iTunes. So, audio podcast. We generally talk about like life, business, um, and then we end up naturally just talking a lot about Dean as well. Which will be interesting as well, like to get Dean from your perspective. Um, and and for y- the, um, when, when you say Dean, for the non Muslim uh, listeners and viewers, that is Dean means religion. Yes, okay, yes. religion. And it, tur- it turns out we do actually have a, um, a large non Muslim uh, following, which is fantastic. Surprising to me. This, is what, this was the idea of the original concept. It wasn't supposed to be a religious uh, podcast or anything like that. Obviously, as we do talk, and I'm sure it will happen ag- again with Josh, naturally, spirituality, and we talk about God, it comes out, it naturally comes out. Not that this is a religious podcast, so it's good. Um, we've got non-Muslims who enjoy listening to us talk as well, which is fantastic. And yeah. we should be aware of that when we say certain things. If we maybe if we mention an Arabic word, maybe tr- try and just uh, just to, to confirm what it means in English as well. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Do remind me as well um, because I, I'm sure I probably fall off that, and I just start. Sp- it's because, mashallah, you speak so much Arabic. No, nah, I don't. My Arabic is poor. It's awful. <laughs> and you're right, actually, which is why we, when we even came up with the name Freshly Grounded and the logo and stuff, we didn't want it um, to like show any signs of like religion or anything because it's like a lifestyle podcast isn't it and um like like i like say naturally born to it but yeah so josh and monica we are we are joined by you uh, award-winning barber what was this award that you won the other day that i saw on on, uh, on social media um so i won the uh, educator of the year award uh, oh, right. in new york city um, which was an absolute pleasure i didn't see it coming and uh, it's funny because i was uh, i was just about to leave the event um, and the boys were there, I was waiting for them. I was actually texting Sam at the time, saying, I'm just about to leave. And then the, uh, the host of the show came up to me and said, you've got to come on stage, like, you've got to come on stage. I was thinking, what do you mean? Next thing I know, he's handed me a award of the Educator of the Year Award. So it was something wow. that was, yeah, it had my name on it, every, everything. So it was planned. It wasn't like 100%. it was just he saw me and then, you know, thought, oh, we've got, you know, something to give. It was, it was a planned thing. And obviously he just didn't find me throughout the night. 
and uh, and that was it. So I'm you know really really uh, really pleased with that. To be honest, I've been working really hard. Um, and you must have been the only, I'm not sure about white, but the only English guy who went. On, so obviously, Alan Beak was on stage as well. Yeah, but yeah. It was very much a very American. Uh, event and um, convention wasn't it? That's it was, right. It yeah, I think I think with um, with Americans and their barbering is fr- is based uh, upon uh, like a very very much so hip hop culture, and um, and and obviously you know being a white English gentleman, it was, fact, it was yeah. quite apparent yeah. you know to be on stage there and it's you know it's quite stand out I guess. Was this when you guys um, were in New York just now? Yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah. So it had kind of a real kind of ghetto culture and then so I stepped you're on the, stage. The best. You're the best like barbering teacher in the world. Yeah, I guess that's what it stands for. Best educator, someone who you know, leads people into, you know, being better. What's what's been your greatest achievement to date um, within your in, uh, within your career? It's a good question, bro. But I, I think there's there's been so many. I think uh, I think generally opening the salon was, you know, that's the ultimate. You know, that's yeah. where things started. So I think for me, um, probably opening the salon, man. It, you know. He's not uh, but from that, your journey has gone from being in St. Albans to being in St. Albans once a month. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. never there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Sure that you, you, you live in your dream. Like, yeah. Yeah. People say, yeah. the fact that you can travel, I'm you mm. can deliver your education, you can earn money, you can explore new lands, you can meet new people. Mm. It's probably, mm. I mean, people... I knew what I wanted from the beginning. Yeah. Let's put it that way. You know, I knew what I wanted to do uh, from the beginning, which was to... You know, help people progress with their work and to travel, like Sam said, and see new places and, it, and, and just generally express my work throughout the world, I think. You know, and, and alhamdulillah, that's what I'm doing. Alhamdulillah. And wait, how often do you travel then? Because you sound so like I would say that it's sort of uh, once or twice a month now that, um, you know, with it, that I'm going away to places. And obviously they're... Sometimes a short amount of time could be for three days, could be for two weeks. So mainly America. Um, only America uh, the last sort of three months. Okay. Um, but yeah, we've we've been all over the place. We've been to Australia, we've been to Canada, we've been to Spain, we've been to Sweden, we've been to Poland. Um, you know, and we've got you know lots more lined up. Inshallah. Sure. So yeah, can't complain. And now you've also you guys have set up the. The the fifty nine cafe, yeah. yeah. that's sick as well. But um, w- I remember when I when I saw you the other day there, I was I was saying to you that you're obviously a guy who like keeps himself like fit and healthy, and you you like going to the gym and stuff. And you were saying mm. the other day that like if you don't go to the gym, um, you're like you're mentally you just feel like you need it basically, which is which yeah. is yeah. And, like and a, a lot of people see gym like that. But when you're constantly traveling, how do you like keep up with that? Well, to be honest with you, um, it is difficult. You know, that's not an easy answer to sort of, you know, comprehend if you like. But um, I know that if I start to feel a little bit weak physically, I'm just going to do some push-ups and some press-ups, sit-ups and anything that I can do to make my, my physical body feel a little bit better, you know, just so I can release those endorphins and, you know, just feel again at a nice steady balance you know because if i start to feel like i haven't been to the gym in mm. you know five six days it's going to have an effect on me and it's going to have uh, you know i guess I, I don't get as creative as i can possibly be if i'm not in a good physical state as well as a mental state so you know for me it's important to keep that balance between you know the mental physical spiritual battle you know how do you find like the spiritual battle and stuff like like traveling and always and traveling again? You know it's difficult trying to perform your salah um, when you, maybe there's not a mosque nearby. Mm. But alhamdulillah, we can pray anywhere. You know, mm. and you know, again, it's something that's uh, it's it's really a blessing because you know Islam is made easy for us, and we should be able to pre- uh, perform our salah anywhere. Um, and also, it's another good way of dawah as well because yeah. you know when people see how submissive you are. Um, you know, even when you're away from home, you know, generally people are sort of outstanding and they, they kind of ask questions and then it's a good time to sort of, you know, express to people what Islam really is. How long have you been Muslim now? Uh, three years. Three years. Sorry, three years, yeah. A couple of weeks back on the podcast, I think it was when potentially we had Lats on, um, Lat, we were talking with Lats and Sam about how as a revert, um, there's like trials that 
one one goes through that like I say a, a born Muslim might not go through and we were kind of going in on that topic and like mainly about how like the difficulties I think me Sam we talk about often like the difficulties of how of, of having like non-Muslim family members yeah and about how you want to kind of respect them you want them to respect you you want them to respect your views you want to respect them um and also like at the same time like keep a complete synergy and keep everyone happy which is which when Sam was explaining it to me um it sounds like a really difficult thing to do you're essentially trying to say like these are my morals which um are quite different to how you've known me in the past like from three years ago and now these are what this is like what i live by i need you to respect it i need you to um like respect me while i do it and i also uh still need your guys's love because you're my family and also my religion tells me that um like breaking ties with my family is such a a, a major sin so how do you find like encompassing all of that and still like considering the fact that it was, it's such a I, I know you're three years in now but at first it would have been such a shock to your family um and trying to keep that love and relationship between them and kind of allowing them to respect you still i think you should really refine that question what you that's how i talk man yeah that was, tough. Big, that was, a, that was a big sort of let me, that will, yeah question that you, so, i know i kind of know what you want do you me to, what I mean? like, yeah, gonna, i want you to kind of go let me rephrase let me rephrase that start with the word yeah. house <laughs> yeah. rephrase that. so, I need to, I need to so josh yeah. um for anyone who doesn't know josh is my business partner and a very dear friend of mine um Josh became um, Muslim shortly after me um, and we both kind of went through the, the journey of uh, becoming new Muslims together. We kind of experienced lots of um, learning how to pray, going to new mosques, going on charity events, um, etc. Um, and obviously then we were, we were dealing with our families at the same time. So we both were dealing with um, our, telling our mums that we were Muslim um, and trying to explain the religion that we had chosen to our parents, and obviously give give our give our parents dower and try and l- let everyone know what 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 way of life we're choosing and why. And we kind of very much used to we used to sit in the car late late at night discussing whatever had happened that day because it seemed those times th- three years ago, alhamdulillah, it seemed like there was so much going on with the fact that we had just become Muslim. Our parents were saying this, this, that, and the other. There was always this next man says something, and there was always so, so much going on. We used to just sit and and just and just talk, mm. um, and um, so I think the, the question was originally: How did you find, basically, the transition, uh, the transition, and showing your family that you are Muslim? Because I'm sure you would agree. Now, I mean, speaking for both of us, mm. we, things are very settled, and we've yeah, kind of yeah, led yeah. by example. Yeah. But at the, at the um, initial stage of obviously coming out as a Muslim, mm. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Obviously, we did. We both dealt with. <laughs> certain um trials and tribulations from right. people around us our family and friends about becoming muslim and having to like kind of our, our, our mums being worried about us and thinking that obviously we went to saudi arabia and performed umrah mm-hmm. and our parents were a bit worried and it was it was kind of it was it was for me personally it was it was quite stressful because it was like um seeing like my mum upset with me just because i'd chosen the religion of islam and for me obviously knowing as a muslim i know that islam is the truth and 100 percent that, that's what i want to be it's also it was very difficult seeing my mum not understand that, and it was almost like she thought I was choosing something over her, mm. which obviously I am. Yeah. But f- it's because like if only she knew the the, the bigger picture of it. So mm. for me, it, it was it was kind of it was it was difficult um, to to deal with that process. I think you would you agree you had you had some sort of yeah. It was definitely definitely some hardship there, um, and you know we can't blame the people. The people don't know. The people see what Islam is on the TV, mm. by the media, and how it's portrayed. You can't blame them. Mm. You can't blame them for, for what they think Islam is. Only if you study it and educate yourself in it, then will you come to understand what a beautiful religion it is, or, or better yet, what a beautiful way of life it is. Mm-hmm. Even, even if you don't, or even if you, if you study it and you, try, and you try to not agree with it in some, com- some compelling way, then you need to be able to try and feel it. And the only way you do that is from the brotherhood of Islam, in which, no doubt, when we become Muslim, we understood and we felt, you know, the, the, the relations between each, each of these Muslims, it was so strong. It was like, we're not even related by blood and yeah. nothing. And the relation is strong and they want from each other what they want for themselves, you know, and that was the general feeling. 
It's almost like we were getting closer to uh, the new people we had just met than we were right. like our own our own families, which is which exactly. is the reality. When you like mm. the, when you love someone for the sake of Allah, obviously we love our families for the sake of Allah, but that love is and that bond, mm. um, and you're both on the same thing. You're both on the same mission together. Yeah. It does bring you very close. Very it close. Was, it was yeah. kind of sad. It was remember thinking like there was sometimes I would get in closer and I'm talking to people that I just met like so much love like more yeah. so than my actual like had been with my my blood brother and like um this was the power this was the this was the power of it, islam yeah. it was like it was it's family isn't it do you know what i mean yeah i find that a lot even now that like i i might have had friends for like five six years from school um but they might not be muslim and then i could meet someone and chill with them a bit and it's like because you have the same goal and mission in life and you have the same understanding and you connect straight away yeah. and you truly do love each other for the sake of yeah. Allah because you have the exact same understanding. If you if you implement um, the rights of like your brother, yeah. if you implement it into a relationship, like it would be, the, it is the most be- beautiful relationship when there's no, there's no like agenda. You love them for the sake of Allah. You do anything for them for the sake of Allah. You want for them what you want for yourself for the sake of Allah. Like it is, uh, it's, uh, it's beautiful. It's, ju- it's, you know I mean, if you implement the rights, obviously you don't backstab your friends. You don't do, you don't mm. cheat your friends. If if everyone implemented that with each other, it would be, it would be a lot more, um, a lot more peace uh, and unity everyone wouldn't there yeah. you know I mean? but do you do you guys find that because you transition because you came to islam around the same time that it was easy because you had each other yeah of course yeah were definitely. you guys as close then definitely. as you are now yeah well yeah i mean probably not i mean, not, actually. I mean in, 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 the, in the way of uh dunya yeah we were we were close we were yeah. tight buddies but i guess you know when, when you have a, a relationship with 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 god and then you know your your brother um it can't, can't get tighter than that, can uh, it? Do you know I, what I mean? Say, I would say it brought us cl- closer on like yeah. a, on another level because it was yeah, another it was level. A relationship. Yeah, relationship. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For me, I wasn't I wasn't even, didn't even believe in God. I remember I, I went on Josh's iPad years ago and found a, a poem in his notes and it was talking about God. And I remember actually being like really like not, not creeped out by it, but shocked and thinking I did the whole concept of God for me was just like a bit like a bit funny mm. I remember thinking right that's strange that kind of like uh, that's, that, that was the effect of well, that's what the condition I was in at the time do you know what I mean um, so then alhamdulillah obviously I, I, I found uh, I found the religion of Islam you were like a very spiritual kind of mm. very much I suppose you were up on tour here yeah. you, you were godly you, you never spoke about a religion or prophets mm. or anything like that um, and um, but yeah obviously when we went through the process of uh, the journey of becoming Muslim together and going through yeah you, you don't really get much closer I think I think with um, obviously a relationship in, in you know maybe in the dunya you know relationships with your friends they come and go I've had so many best friends in my life you know that, that have come and gone but you know with, with the friends that are, I know that are Muslim you know that, that I could not see one someone for 10 years and be best friends with them again for 10 years you know and it and it's just it just seems like there's a bit of a tighter connection because you know you have the same thought process the same belief you know the same kind of vision if you like um and th- that's how i feel i'd say i yeah. suppose even if you have like different personality traits because like the core of what you believe is the same mm. it's beautiful that there's different personality traits because that that brings like so the someone's weaknesses will be your strengths and someone's strengths will be mm. your weaknesses and mm. the world would be such a boring place if we were all exactly oh, the same course, yeah. so the fact that we you can be different people but when your core value is the same you like have this like mad love for mm. someone it's insane man I, I found like I've, I've some of the friends and people I've spent time with since becoming Muslim and not people I'd ever ever in my life think that I would sit there and, and spend time with or people I've been away with and people I've what not yourself, but like people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But people I walk, I walk down the road with, and, and not like saying, I, you know what I mean. Just people who like, I never thought I would become very like close with, because of Islam and because of the, the the topic and conversation and the reason that we're even friends is because for the sake of Allah, it creates a whole other dimension to a friendship because you can sit. It doesn't matter. They can do something totally n- non-related to your industry and your your um, your your hobbies and your passions and everything. But if you are a Muslim, you can have that. You, ha- you can just talk. You can just talk about it, can't you? You can talk about it for days. So this, yeah. like, this brings you closer. hundred percent, man. I, 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 you were just talking about um, hardship, and I was listening to a lecture this morning, and it really like just. It, I was saying to Sam just now that, you know, when you're listening to a lecture, sorry, when you see a lecture pop up, it's and it's never coincidence because like Allah has put it in your like it has written it has written for you to see that like even if it's just a reminder on instagram or if it's a lecture if you're listening to it it's because it's written for you to listen to it right 
I was listening to a lecture today that just hit me, man. It was about hardship and it was talking about how to view hardship. And obviously, like, I th I'm literally just reiterating what's in the lecture because I don't have knowledge on, on, on the Quran and the language of Quran like this. But the, the, the speaker was basically saying that, you know, a lot of people talk about the verse, um, Inna ma al usri yusra, which mm -hmm. is after hardship comes ease. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they, well, people translate it to after hardship comes ease. I don't know the exact translation. What she was saying is that um, it was a Yasmin Mujahid lecture. And what she was saying is that um, people, a lot of times people listen to that and say after hardship comes ease. But what they don't realize is that what it means is with hardship comes ease. And so what Allah is doing is every time he gives us uh, hardship, he gives us many eases to deal with that hardship. Mm. So, but it's not like, so it's not like, oh, you're dealing with like hardship um, Oh, don't worry, soon there'll be ease. She said it's not like that. She said you got to realize that it's like, oh, you're dealing with hardship. Reflect on the ease that you've just been given. Because if you've been given hardship, that means Allah has also given you much more ease than hardship. But you, but we focus on the hardship because it's what we, we're putting our focus on. Yeah, so yeah. she said that it's very important to reflect what we put our focus on. And she was given an example. She said, have you ever seen when like a, an, an amazing event is happening, like someone will be getting married? And then as they like... Like sometime, like a month or two after their wedding, their like mother will pass away, and everyone will be like, uh, you, you look at it like, oh, like they just got, like they they just got uh, married, and like now their mother's passed away. Like how like sad is that? But she said, why can't you look at it like we should be? Our mentality should be like, what a blessing, because that person was gonna pass away anyway. Yeah, that's what mm. she said. And she said, what a blessing is it that Allah mm. knew that, that was gonna happen, obviously. And gave you uh, a husband because she was talking about a sister at the time. She said, "Gave you a husband to help you deal with that hardship that you're about to go through in two months' time." But we never think of it like that. And she, and she said, "If you actually think about it, every time that we get some kind of hardship, if you look around the same time, you would have got some sort of ease." And then I was thinking about it, bro, and it even made me it like made me reflect. Like, Subhanallah, I'd never think about hardship in that way. I am often told after hardship comes ease, and obviously I do think about like you know, Alhamdulillah, after this it will be ease. But I've never considered that <coughs> maybe this hardship is like um, yes, it's hardship one thing, but what's the, like I've I've got loads of like Allah has blessed me with so much ease. Um, to deal with this hardship Maybe it'll be like a relationship with a friend That he's just given you That will help you deal with the hardship Or something like that And we're always going to get hardship Because Allah tests us But the beautiful thing is That when he tests us He always makes uh, Gives us things to help us with the test How beautiful is that? Yeah, it's powerful Powerful, isn't it? Mm. It just like reflects your mentality Like, bro after, She said this. The whole concept of it Is that we're meant to be We're meant to have gratitude Yeah And we're meant to be thankful to Allah And it's hard for us I really don't want to sound like I'm preaching Because I, like I said I have no right to I'm literally reiterating what I heard That's all I'm doing Like I'm just like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I'm doing And w this is exactly what she was saying She was saying that uh, We have to be grateful right? And often we're told And we think to ourselves We should be grateful right And because that's something That as Muslims we teach ourselves We have to be grateful We have to be grateful Have to say Alhamdulillah But we've got to be cautious That we don't just let that become a habit And we actually think about being grateful yeah. And so the example she gave is that in the Quran, Allah talks about Musa Islam and his time and about how at that time, um, this is powerful man, <coughs> it's about how at that time, the, it was the, the worst uh, tyrant ever, forget Trump, this was like, it was yeah. Fir'aun, right? And at that time, Fir'aun was killing babies, yeah? And Allah sent down, um, oh, I don't want to misquote it, man, but essentially a message was sent down to Musa Islam and people Musa Islam at that time, and the message was, not something like, oh, it will, like there will be ease or like it will get better or anything like that. The message was be grateful. Hmm. Yeah. So even people who are going through mad hardship worse than us, like their babies are being killed. Yeah. And they were being grateful because when they focus on what, like when they're gracious, Allah will give you more of it. Mad, isn't it? And yeah. like they were, it's just mad, man. Like the, I know um, I just rambled on, I know, but it's just because this morning, man. I mean, I we just, can relate to that as well in, in terms of our business, if you like. You know, um, we started out with three people. We were started. We we just started, you know, the dean and such, you know, between that time, and now we've got twelve people. You know, we've been we've been praying since. You know. Oh, you mean you got twelve people that are twelve practicing Muslim? I I twelve people that have become Muslim. No, Muslim. no, just twelve people in our business. Okay, so okay, uh, right, right. you know, it just just goes to show how grateful we are for our business, our lives, our health, etc. And you know, and, and and Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ibrahim, ch uh, chapter fourteen, uh, no, chapter chapter fourteen, verse seven. Okay. If you are grateful, I shall increase you. Yeah, that's and she, it she just, said it that. just goes to show evidently, you know, if you are grateful, you know, things will come for you, you know, and, and in for the better. 
Yeah, and she was talking about that exact eye, and she was saying about how Allah says, "I will increase you," but He doesn't. He doesn't say what He will increase you in. With and yeah. the re- uh, uh, and the reason is because Allah, because there's no limit to it. He's not put, Allah is not putting a limit on it. Precisely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's mad, bro. Like. I, like I said, it's, it's mad because we just turned this into like exactly like what, but it's it's just crazy because it it just hit me this morning. Just, I just came across it this morning. I don't often listen to lectures right first thing in the morning. I, I came across it and it just had so much power over me that 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 reminder, bro. Yeah, man. Cause, uh, yeah. I think that that's that's the best reminder of you know of your life, mate. Yeah. To be grateful. Yeah. To be grateful. It's a, Why it's shouldn't a you? Even outside the religion of Islam, yeah, of course, for people man, like people. Of um the, pe- the successful people and the, the, the ten, 10 top tips of being successful and yeah. all this kind of stuff it's in the morning first thing you do is be like meditate as such or pray but be grateful and count yeah. your blessings and this is for people who don't even have a, a belief in Allah a belief in God it's a, it's a practice that people implement as soon as you wake up be grateful about what you actually have what got you have, mm-hmm. thinking about what you haven't got think about what you have got it's a, it's a, and yeah. th- that's what the even non-Muslims recommend people do in the morning yeah, to I be successful do you know what I mean is that do you know what it is? When you wake up and you think, Qua, alhamdulillah, all the things that, all the positions I could be in, um, yeah. alhamdulillah, it could, be, yeah. uh, it could be a lot worse. Or you could wake up and it's raining outside and you think, bloody hell, I don't want to go to work. You know, that's horrible. What a mm. way to think. Yeah. Rather than thinking, wow, I have an opportunity to, to earn a living, you know, and, and be a, with social, socially, be with people at work. You know, it was great, excellent, because some people don't have that. Of course. I think having a negative mindset is something that you really have to, like, as a person, train yourself um, to get out of I wouldn't be lying in if, if I said that my mindset was very negative before and I'm still I suppose training myself be- but it's it definitely become more positive and it's just something what you think with your thoughts really does change your attitude you mm. just like it, you have to train yourself to be, have a more positive attitude essentially oh yeah your, yeah your life and whether you're having a good life is based upon your mind mm. it's not really it's not about what you've got if you, if you think about it obviously you can't if you look back at the years you've lived it's and what the times that you feel like you're happy it's not necessarily the the material things that you've got in your life at the time it's it's your mindset and how you're and how you're thinking so really w- with whatever you're dealing with in your life obviously we do have ups and downs this is the nature of the dunya but when hardship comes if you can put that positive spin on it and treat it with treat it positively like we should be as muslims we know that when hardship comes it's a test from allah and allah, allah tests the ones that he loves 100%. obviously easier said than done but it's it, all. I'm, the point is, it's a mindset. We determine whether we're having a good day or a bad day. If we're having a bad day, spin it round and create a good day out of it because it, it's up to us. It's we we decide in our mind when the day's done. Did we have a good day? Did we have a bad day? Did I achieve anything? Did I? Did I? Do you know what I mean? We we are the ones. We are in the driving seat. Basically, we we can decide how we how we're gonna ha- how we're gonna live our our lives. How we're gonna do what we're gonna do today. Am I gonna do something productive? Am I gonna get up and train? Am I gonna go pray, read? Am I going to do something productive or am I going to stay in bed, have a sleep in, then watch some TV? Like, we, you know what I mean? It's very much what we decide to do is mm. really is the outcome of, of how we are. For sure, man. For you know? sure. Okay, we're back from our break. How was your break? Alhamdulillah. It was <laughs> I didn't do much apart from changing cameras and stuff. It's the hottest day of the year, guys, so far. Yeah, I can feel it. Did you know that? This is the hottest office in London as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's so hot in here, isn't it? Cool. But it, so I think we might have got a deal. I, I now... That we've got this office, I think we may have got a deal on it because of the there's no AC. Oh really? Well, you can feel it. Well, do you know what? It's not that hot outside, so I worry what yeah. your you know those hot days. Mm. I, w- I mean, you get fans and stuff, but I, I worry you what's going to happen like you got here. Tan in here. Yeah, it's because this room's so hot. Yeah, you know, you've say, got a tan as well. Is that one of the new things you brought to the airport? Nah, I mean, I'm just, I must, yeah, it must be this office then. In that case, I mean, you look like you got. I mean, mashallah. Uh, I mean, alhamdulillah, I'm naturally a bit brown. Brown, yeah, mashallah. A bit brown. Yeah, you, you look tanned, you look great. Yeah, I've just come back from away. Yeah, I mean, you do look good, Sam. Is this where you come once a week to get tanned? I've been away a few times, so I've got a little tan and that. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah, we, uh, unfortunately, like, we thought that it wouldn't be that much of an issue. We thought it wouldn't be that much of an issue having this office because we've got an outside area, but the outside area actually has a roof. Yeah, it's inside. Oh. Yeah, so oh, it's right. actually not an outside area at all. Oh. Nah. Oh. Mm. We're completely oh. buggered. It's yeah. just, it, you know, it feels so weird doing this at uh, four o'clock in the afternoon. It really does, Usually it? this is the first thing brand new yeah. in, mor- in the morning. It like you've been here since the morning as well, right? Yeah, I, 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 feel str- like I, still, I feel strange. I came a little bit early. I came for about just after one or so. I was going to go go into central London and, uh, and get some shorts, um, but I didn't. And I came here and it kind of feels like I've been here for a long time. Yeah. I feel... Um, you must I feel be tired. 
I am tired. Yeah. How was Dublin, guys? Yeah, so yeah. Dublin was. Yeah, we haven't even spoken about Dublin yeah. yet. Well, let's talk. Let's. Well, you been, if it's, can we talk now? A hundred percent. I'd love yeah, to hear about Dublin. Josh, how was Dublin, mate? You just came back from Dublin. When was it yesterday? Yeah, I mean, I was asleep. You tell me. How did it go? What did you do? Oh wait, didn't <laughs> you guys go th- both go? We both went. Yeah, we went, but then I fell asleep the whole time. Uh, well, he w- yeah, I went. <laughs> had a sleep for a couple of hours. Yeah, I got there. So, Josh, tell why why did you go to Dublin yesterday? Yeah, so we went we went over to Dublin yesterday to go and check out a premises. Uh, one of our guys, Glenn, at the salon, he's Irish, and um, he wants to eventually open up a salon in Dublin in his hometown. So he actually uh, he uh, he sent us over there i mean i say that he works for us but we uh, seems we work for him yeah uh yesterday um so we were working yesterday i think uh we got well. up very very early we got up at four o'clock we left wow. at, i left my house at four thirty. that's before Fajr. yeah 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 it's pretty yeah, 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 wow. yeah so it's really early yeah especially i mean what time you, you went to bed quite late as well didn't you uh, yeah i mean i was you didn't bed. have much sleep yeah what airport did you go to? Luton. Went to Luton. So the Luton flight was at 6.50. Okay. Um, got there at 8 o'clock, got picked up, and then we head into the centre. So it was 9 o'clock. We had some breakfast, had a coffee, and it was 10 o'clock. So we had an, an hour to spare before we had to go to this, uh, you know, viewing. So... And and at that time, it started to feel very, very long, didn't it? You know, <laughs> from 10 to 11, it was like, okay, what are we going to do now for an hour? Even though it's only an hour. And then... Some, you, know when, you know when you're very, very tired? Yeah. And... You've done all the hanging around. You've done everything. Eaten, you're sitting there like, you, you've got two options. Coffee. You need to be active. And you really need to be active or you need to go to sleep. Wait, the so whole sitting just to confirm, you guys both had hardly any sleep two nights ago and then you had a four, you had to wake up at four in the morning and then last night Sam you've had pretty much no sleep so you're oh, wanting off like you, you need to catch up on two days worth of sleep right now yeah you look can I just say you look shattered I, yeah, I, you look great sh- you look shattered so last night I got in and I was looking forward to it must have been about 12 o'clock or so I was looking forward to just conking out uh, I conked out for half an hour to hear a um, that there was a, a rat or a mouse trying to get into gain gain entrance to my property mm-hmm. uh, by gnawing from the down st- I don't know what was going on, and that happened um, every half an hour till uh, I think four or five, and then my son woke up at seven, obviously, and um, I'm tired, man. How much sleep do you think in the last forty eight hours you've had in total? Not enough. I'm not gonna try. I I almost sat and tried to work out. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to issue an official statement that I've had not, <laughs> not enough sleep. We, we might have to get that on paper. I saw, uh, speaking of pests, um, uh, not, not your, I'm talking about the, not you, your, you or your son, I'm talking about the pests. The pest that yeah. was. Speaking of, I, saw a, um, <laughs> I saw a car on the, on the motorway today that it was a pest control van, and it said, it, this was their tagline, it was like pest control. You hate pests, but we love them. Really? Weird, isn't it? A bit of a weird tagline. Yeah, well, so yeah. I don't, I don't hate them. For them right? But if Sorry? it makes a living for them, I suppose. Well, yeah. I love them. See, I don't hate, I don't hate them, and I feel bad that I'm, I've actually had to call a a, um, a pest control today. I don't. I mean, the little guy can crack on, do whatever he wants. But if you're disturbing my sleep, that's that's an offence. Also, you don't want you don't want pests in your house, bro. Little mouse running around having. Nah, you don't want cheese. that. Are you serious? Nah, you don't want that. Nah, but obviously they can make babies, bro. It's a creation of others, so I'm merciful towards it. But now I'm know. afraid that that mercy is gone, um, and tonight will be. If it happens again, it will be it'll be a serious situation for the little thing. I should have time. grabbed that pest control number for you. I don't need no pest control. I want to do it. I'll de- take it to my own hands. It, Tonight. Oh, you're manning it. You're going to man it yourself. If I have to. Alhamdulillah. So, so you was in Josh? Dublin. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, so we went to the viewing. Uh, we managed to get it a, a touch earlier. Um, looked at the gaff. It was nice. Great. Uh, one of our friends over there who was with us at the time, he lives five minutes down the road from where we was viewing the, the place. And then uh, I ended up falling asleep for a couple of hours on his sofa. Wow. And then we went home. You flew back same day? We flew back last night. We um, yeah. we had a, quite a late flight, considering we yeah, the viewing was at eleven. Yeah. And to be fair, I think it's my fault because I think the question was asked, and I I remember what I said. Yeah. But the viewing was at eleven, so we got a very early morning flight. I'm happy. I'm happy with that. 
but the flight at home was until nine nine fifty. Nine fifty. Now that is quite late when you yeah. when you've viewed the only reason you've left your land, got on a plane, visited a new land, is to to view this one thing. For them to have that window afterwards, to do nothing, is I I discovered just that it's a it's a very very vast window to so uh, to do when you're not doing anything. So l- let me put it this way: we spent fifteen hours from the moment we got up. To the moment we arrived back home, we spent 15 hours out of land to look at a property for 15 minutes. We could have done that on FaceTime. Yeah, yeah. I mean, then and when we was heading home, we said we could have just FaceTimed Chris, our friend, who lives three minutes away from the from the gaff. There's nothing like seeing a property in person. Yeah, but yeah, 15 when hours. Ah, you got to check it out. When it's down the road. Yeah. Ah, you put your money into it. Put hard earned money into that place. Yeah, you got to check it out one time. Sorry? Did he send it to you? It was, um, it, was a bend- it was a good trip. It was a fantastic place. Made the it was a fantastic place. You've got to bear in mind that this yeah. is why Allah gives us so many... Um, uh, e- um, like 15 hours, 15 minutes. Easies when we're travelling, it isn't it? It's true. Because yeah, like I almost said that earlier when Josh was talking about being a, being a traveller so often when it comes to, when it comes to the Dean and travelling. Alhamdulillah, I actually, like, um, when I first started practising and I went, on, I went away, I wasn't aware of the... Um, the allowances that um, Allah makes for things like salah, etc. Mm, yeah, and it's actually it's actually really nice to go away because you know, a lot of, obviously, not that praying is a, is a, is hardship, but it's nice to make it so easy that you're out and about doing things, and you know, Allah makes it so easy for you. You can com- yeah. combine it, yeah, and it just makes it a lot more a simple process. Just so when you're out and about doing things, when it is it is difficult sometimes to find someone to pray. When mm. you know when you can combine it, it it makes it so easy. So yeah. we were alhamdulillah, we had we had a, we had a really good day. Um, and then we to end the day we got one of the guys to take us to the local masjid mm-hmm. and it was beautiful yeah, really it was a converted church bro, yeah. and it was just like it was I think we 15 20 minutes we went we just obviously did our dhuhr and asa did wudu and just chilled in there for a little minute yeah. it was a short amount of time but it felt like I'd like just almost felt like I just when I had like a shower yeah oh wow you yeah. spiritually you did bro, I felt so, oh yeah of course yeah. I felt so cleansed after doing my salah like, what beautiful thing so beautiful obviously beautiful. Yeah. I was doing the wudu it actually physically I am cleansing myself when I stepped out afterwards it was just like alhamdulillah obviously it was just, just about to get dark before we left anyway it was just a nice it smelled nice and the air was nice I felt nice. Mm. It's, it's something beautiful about Salah. It was like it's a had a new new energy yeah, as such. Yeah. Had a new, new refreshing. Energy, we were yeah. ready to we were ready to sort of leave yeah. for the airport. Yeah. Going, do you know what I mean? It was nice. It was just a nice, do you know what, it was a big reminder how how much like I, I couldn't not not do prayer. I couldn't not pray. Yeah. Like it's such a important part of my mm. life. Like that little time. I think the journey back would have been much more stressful, wouldn't it? Of course, it adds stress. When you haven't yeah. done your Salah, you know you have to. Like for instance, I mean, you now you couldn't even take your shoes off in the plane, could you? No, you couldn't take your shoes off. No, you couldn't. Oh really? Yeah, because can't even take your shoes off, mate. Just imagine that. Imagine if you didn't pray and you got asked to put your shoes that back guy on. That irritated imagine. me a lot. I think if you didn't pray, bro, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The man was ir- quite irritating. Yeah. I thought. Yeah. I um, there's a the, the guy of the uh, air stewardess, the man. He, I got, I was so thirsty. I was at the airport, thinking I'm thirsty. I want to wait till I get on the plane. I can ask for a bottle of drink. Fine. Mm. And I did that. I got on the plane. I asked him. And I was like dry throat. I said, Oh, mate, please, can I have? It? He goes, But things not open. Da, 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 you have to wait. I said, "Oh look, please, I'll pay you." No, no I one can ever deny this person water. That's, that's a human. That's a human right. Is I didn't even play that card. I, I was thinking, you're telling me I can't have water. Like, there's no way I can get water unless you give it's it. It's not to like me. you're asking for a so lemonade. He says no. I thought fine. Maybe so it was the way you asked for it. No, I thought I was polite. Yeah, I mean, the first time it was definitely. Can you get some water for the big dunk? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Yeah, Sorry? I mean, yeah, yeah. Is that what he said? He said, "Can you get some water for the big dog?" What you say? The big don. Oh, the big don I'll, I'll give me like like some water for the big don and I'll pay you later. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know, but you tell me. <laughs> it's not quite correct. Yeah. Is it? It's something like that, wasn't it? Oh, get, get me some water for the big don and I'll pay you later when you Either come Either way, through. the geezer never brought me water. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. fell asleep. I missed the. They never brought, and then at the end of the flight, I go, please, mate, I thought you were going to bring me some water. And he goes, no, you missed it. And I, no I got off the way. flight so thirsty still. No, how long <laughs> is the flight? It's over an hour. An hour, hour, yeah, so. hour yeah. Still, you know, though. Bro, I said to the guy looking in the eye, please, can I have some water? <laughs> no and at the end of the flight, I was like, did you bring me the water? He's like, no. no I was thinking, way. how has this happened? Like, <laughs> nah, man. Firstly, you're an air stewardess. That should be your job to look after the, the people, the passengers. Mm. But as a human being <laughs> like <laughs> someone's asking someone with someone someone a husky a voice, voice Can I have some water an hour later they, they look mash up Can I have some water <laughs> no you're, that's ruthless and also you're s- as an air steward your sole job is to look after the people yeah, on the plane yeah. so that's the only job I, you have I really had, of course I had such a bitter feeling about the company as I left thinking what a terrible service like I'm so <laughs> thirsty 
I'm so, I'm thirsty. Well, the the, the hardest thing is, it's an only an hour flight as well. And generally, you can't get up and go to the toilet, can you? No. So only until you're fully in the air, 20 minutes in, you can go to the toilet. And then 10 minutes later, you get an announcement saying, if you need to use the toilet, we're going to be landing in 20 minutes time. So you've got about 10 minutes to get to the toilet <laughs> in about midair. Everyone's trying to go, go as well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, before you go back down. And the though. same with refreshments. You've got a small window time where if you don't get it, finished. So on the, on the way back from, no, wait, on the way to New York, I was sat next to the toilet. Have you ever done that? I have. I, I, on the way to Dubai, uh, Dubai October, I was sat next to the toilet and they just cussed the people next to me. <laughs> no, you're, <a> boy. You, <laughs> you, 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 you're really aware when you're sitting next to the toilet because you'll have the, the annoying yeah, shutter, yeah. the and that, smell, the Yeah, the and generally like people like, they, they go and gather and queue up. They've got no, no one's got any shoes on. You're thinking, why are you going to that toilet with no shoes on? You're just in socks. Yeah. And I, I, they queue, they queue next to you. They were like, oh, yeah. yeah it's it's the just smell, yeah. So I, I advise like, staying away from the toilet. Mm. Do you know, I, I quite enjoyed, it. apart from all that, I like the fact that I sat next to the toilet because there's no one behind me. So I had like a big area behind me and so I could do my salon nice and easy. I could stand. Oh, nice. It. You stood up and do your salon. Yeah, it was I've, really I've nice. not done that on a plane. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Nice. Standing and doing your salon on a plane is really nice, man. You never had the, I really had that yeah. opportunity. You never, yeah. don't really. Yeah, it's tough, man. It's tough. I was quite. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah it was. But again, from you do that, yeah? Emirates, though, surely. It was British Airways. Oh, yeah. Do you know what? The, the ease, alhamdulillah, obviously, you can stand up, that's probably better. But the ease of just sitting there and being able to do yeah. the prayer. Again, it's like yeah, if you are true. doing like a long haul flight and you know you, your salah, you have to do yeah, sit and do salah, which is so easy and you're combining, mm. I'll kind of just make the most of that, that, that ease. Mm. Alhamdulillah. Um, I remember you was, um, when you were saying about going, like, being aware of prayer when you haven't prayed it. I remember when we landed in Gambia, when we all went. And like the one of the first things you you had said, you were quite you were quite like conscious of like you had to get your prayer yeah. in like when we were landing Gambia. Do you remember? Yeah, it makes me bro. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. For instance, now I'm a traveller, so I haven't done my dhuhr. Yeah. Mm. Now I'm still I'm fine. I'm doing, but I'm so aware yeah, yeah. Like, of my salah. Ready yeah. to go. Ready to go. Ready to go. As soon as I've done this, I feel like I've got like a huge yeah. window now. Obviously, until yeah. until Maghrib. For me, it, like it, it's a, it, it burns at me. It, oh, hundred percent same here. Which I'm, which I'm happy. That I, was, I, I was done given that for me because I know I know there's obviously a lot of people who, who don't even consider like even Muslims don't even consider the, the salah yeah. and the salah pr- prayer times and stuff. It's not. Do you know what I mean? So Alhamdulillah, I'm aware. I think it's important to actually study prayer times as well so you've got it in your head when when mm. prayers when when times are coming in obviously it's very good to know when fajr is it's very good to know when you can do tahajjud it's very good to know when you're obviously now it's summertime the dhuhr comes in a bit later so you've actually and you can actually obviously pray your dhuhr a bit later you can actually pray it close to asa so you can kind of change your day up a little bit it's good to it's good to know prayer times and i know it sounds like an obvious thing but to know when isha comes in to know when maghrib is um yeah 100 percent. i mean to be honest like we should all even make the effort to like do us. I would love to like make the effort to like literally do all of my salah at the masjid. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I've oh, yeah. alhamdulillah because myself and Josh, our shop is right next to the masjid. There's been there's been many days when I've been able to achieve that. Obviously, when you're out and about doing things, it's it's very very difficult. Yeah. But you're, you're very you can feel it. The end of the, your day, you can feel it if you've done your all your yeah, salah in the mosque. Yeah, 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 yeah. You feel. Oh, yeah. You say I say alhamdulillah. You feel like you you've fulfilled your purpose. Mm. Do you know what I mean by yeah, that? Yeah, I mean that's the, of course. We can have a great day in business. Yeah, and we can sit there thinking, wow, I'm really, I've achieved a lot today, I've earned a lot of money, or I've achieved this, I've done that. But it, that contentment will only last you for a short amount of time until it kind of goes, and it's like, it's only dunya. But when you, when you get, when you, when you do something for the sake of all, and you have a very strong day, Dean-wise, you can really feel it. I think mm. you go to sleep, like, feeling, like I said, like, fulfilled. fulfilled yeah, you yeah. feel like you've, because you, you obviously are fulfilling your purpose, you kind of just feel like, it's like, check. It's like, you know, the m- materially, yeah, if you have a good financial day, and that with business, it's great. That stuff comes and goes. Mm. The moment that you maybe may miss a prayer, you ain't getting that time back. Time's up, you know. So if you fulfill that purpose in the by getting in the mosque, you know you're gonna feel so much better than than obviously just doing it at home or or whatever, you know. Sure. Yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. So how um how are you finding being a Muslim, Josh? Yeah, alhamdulillah. Um, you know, in terms of etiquette, not much has changed other than you know trying to be a bit more giving to people um, and I guess just holding myself and my mannerisms a lot better you know and generally so prior to Islam you were a, a godly man you were you were aware of uh, you were aware of Allah um, but obviously you said etiquette you didn't want of the, maybe the ruling that kind of goes around how you should be how you should speak to people yeah I think what, sort where of your eyes should go where your hand should go that's it that's exactly it that's exactly it you know beforehand you know I would, I would go out and party on a Saturday night Sunday night and um, you know do things that I shouldn't do 
But, you know, I never smoked, never drunk, never did anything that was, uh, you know, in, in that form, if you like. Uh, but I guess it was just, you know, like you say, you know, where my eyes went, my hands went, and mm-hmm. where I went, it's myself. Yeah. And just trying to generally, uh, just trying to sh- show myself as a better character all round, you know. And that way, if I am a better character, maybe someone's inspired by my character, and to the point where they'll ask, well, how do you get like that? How do you be like that? Why are you always conscious of being a good character? And then you can say, well, here you go. Well, here's, the, you know, here's the book. Here's the manual. This is what I read from. If you read from this too, you're going to be the same way. You seem like quite like a, a cool, calm and collected character. Have you always been like that? Like even before you... Um yeah. Um, you are talking to me, aren't you? Um, uh, sorry, um, let, me, let me just... Uh, Josh... You seem like quite oh. a cool, calm, collected character. Have you always been like that? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> my dad was uh, a boxer when he was young. Oh, really? And um, I, I got into boxing as well. And I think with that and from that, it's, it's enabled me to have a lot of discipline. So whenever, you know, someone may get angry, I think by having that, you can, you can control your, your anger through your discipline. And um, I think that's allowed me to be very composed and calm in my nature. So I think through through sport and activity, that's probably the way that I've been able to be a little bit more composed. Do you get angry a lot? I don't get angry a lot, no, because I can control it. You know, that's um, such a, that is that is a, such a beautiful bro, trait. You'd be surprised what this guy. Yeah, like, I can imagine. Yeah, obviously, everyone gets such tested. Everyone's channel, getting pushed. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and you I, can. I, the years I've known this guy, I've seen him angry. Maybe not even angry. I've seen him frust- frustrated, lost his temper maybe once or twice, and not even right. not even proper, not even not even proper anger, just like. A clear frustration, but but controlled but still though. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, obviously when someone uh, sees such red, a be- honestly, Josh, that is such a beautiful like. I can't explain from as someone who like you know struggles what we talk about that, what we want to yeah. achieve. Yeah, this guy. As someone who you, struggles yeah. with that, it's such a may Allah bless that for you, man. I mean, because um, yeah, man, some of us are tested with that stuff, man. Yeah. Not, I don't, I'm not. An, I don't want to say I'm an angry person, but I definitely have a problem with patience, probably, and that's what leads to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but do you not find you, you, know, you got on? Yeah, go on. I was gonna say times that me and you've been away. You, you obviously know what my character's like and my, my, my patience and isn't great at all times. Obviously, I'm trying to work on it and that, but do you find that we've been away, it's like I have been tested more than you and there's sort of situations that I find myself in where, remember we were in Morocco that time and that little girl called me a kafir yeah. and all, all, these little, <laughs> all these little things. Do you think they, would you notice it kind of, would yeah, you well, say I, attra- think I attract it a little bit? Uh, or is it just because I'm just failing the test? Not attract, but react. Yeah. It's, you know... If that situation happened to me, I would just laugh and walk away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I'd be, I'd be comfortable with that. It wouldn't bother me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think it's not, you know, it's the, it's the reaction. And in, in fact, if you want to talk about the mind, it's the reactive mind as opposed to the analytical mind. The analytical mind is something that will be able to create a, a solution for the problem by, you know, analyzing the problem first and solving it through your mind first before obviously you have the opposite, which is the reactive mind and, you know, you do something without thinking maybe you so know that so mean you're quite conscious of, of absolutely that? yeah I, i'd say that I, I will always think think things through yeah um when it comes to but situations that may be frustrating or something and then what you've got to understand is what's the opposite of frustration and how how do you combat frustration is being patient how do you be patient but there's loads of exercises you can do to be to become patient do you know what i mean give me one exercise mm-hmm Exercise. Don't expect results straight after. Day. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, day one. Yeah. There you go. You know. So uh, understanding. When you say exercise, do you mean like exercise physically or like exercise your mind? Like, so when you get tested with these times, you should try and like hold, not hold your breath, but hold, like hold it in and let the time pass. Do yeah, you know what I mean? both, both. I'm, t- you know, both in exercise and and physically and mentally. You know, if you get a situation that arises, maybe it's difficult because you might need someone there to assess that when they're with you and just say, look, stop, take a minute, which I'm sure we have. We've probably had friends around us when there's been a, fr- a frustrating time. But, you know, maybe they haven't had the knowledge to say, look, take a moment, think about this. OK, what can you do now? What can happen? What difference is it going to make if you say this or do this or do that? And then they'll, then they'll start to think about it and go, OK, if I say this, this is going to happen. This is going to react. They're going to react like this. It's just like working it out, I guess, you know. So that's the way that I look at it from an analytical point of view, to the outcome of the t- total situation. 
Does yeah, that make yeah, sense? Yeah, it does make sense. It does. Yeah, so I'm uh, like an overview. It's just the, the thing, I completely understand what you're saying. I think the problem that many people, the problem that lies with many people, especially me, is getting yourself to the point mentally mm. at which you think to yourself, okay, let me take an analytical like, stance on this. Where, because when you're in the moment, yeah. that's the tough thing. You're in the moment and you're in the moment of like, it's cloud, it clouds your judgment, do you know what I mean? So it's, yeah. it's, it's the transition of actually taking that step out to then think like that, which is the tough mm. bit. Which, like you said, I suppose is discipline, isn't it? A, a absolutely, practicing. absolutely. I mean, you could take, give me a scenario, for example. Like, uh, oh, uh, do you want... Yeah, give me a, yeah, give me a scenario. I'll I mean, so, you. so you're, you're a businessman, obviously. Yeah. So, like, let's say you're in your salon and um, yeah. the, t- the tensions are high because everyone's got, everyone's got, uh, I'm, I'm making this up on the spot. I'm a story maker. Here we go. Okay, okay so. here we go. I'm in. Got, I'm in. You've got every, every everyone is working on a client right now. Yeah. On top of that, there's a whole list of clients in there sat on the sofa that are booked in, waiting. And there's a whole lot of people that was come in as walk-ins. Right? Okay, yeah. Stress okay. is very high. Optimal, oh, yeah? yeah. Now, what's happened is... A customer decides to start uh, getting angry at you. Something's happened. The customer's got angry, and um, they they have they've got erratic behaviour. And um, oh man, Sam, finish this off for me because I've run out of the ending okay, of the story. Okay, okay. And they 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 they're taking their frustrations out on you. They pulled you to one side and said, "You're the you know you're the boss around here. Yeah, yeah you're I'm the boss. Up, you're the big guy, big." You know, you you think you're Billy Jean yeah. this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, I want, I want some I want some compensation. Okay, fine. Well, what I'll pull them to the other side and say, look, here's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna give you a free haircut. Maybe I might not be able to fit you in now. Yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offer you to do it on my lunch break, my personal time. How would you feel about that? Or I'm gonna say, well, what else can you do? What can you do? What am I supposed to do? Rear up back at him? How do you think that he will react with that? But what if like the person is just not having it? You're the objective, the objective is it's to calm the situation, right? Yes, okay. it's to calm the situation and, and retain them as a client, right? Mm. Because at any given moment, say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, you've lost their business. Mm. True? True. True. So how can you combat that? First of all, no doubt, you're going to offer them something on your behalf. Right. Secondly, you're going to have to sacrifice some of your time, maybe, if, if you've made a mistake, or if you haven't made a mistake. That's depends business. How much, depends how much you value their business, right. doesn't it? Yep. You know? Otherwise, you can just say, yeah, sling your rope. So what you're saying is, essentially, you always have to be the water to the fire. You have to cool the situation down, and then, and then yeah. I, I, I completely understand. I completely understand. I get where you're coming from. Mm. I think it definitely takes a lot of practice. Every scenario is different, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know. Any more scenarios before we move on? Yeah, give uh, me some uh, more scenarios. Uh, go on, scenario. you built, built one then. Yeah, go on, yeah go give me a scenario. scenarios before we move on, move to topic. You're, you're driving the car. Okay, yeah? fine. Someone has just cut you up, it's not your fault, but they've decided to get road rage at you. Uh, and they're literally in your face, right? Um, it's, you're now getting angry. And, um, and uh, Sam, finish off the story again. I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to... I'm not going to give an example about when he's in the car because I feel like sometimes I not that he I not not seen him necessarily have road rage, but I think when, when Josh is driving, he's um, still calm, but but a lot more firm. He's a lot more f- firm on the roads than he is in in, r- in real life. Really, you, you put him behind the steering wheel. So change change uh, scenario because I'm, I'm not going to comment I'm on the driving. I've seen him. I've seen I've seen people cut him up, and I've seen uh, he doesn't shout. But he's firm. He's firm behind that. Uh, would you agree that when you're when you're behind the you know, yeah, I mean, take it seriously. You see, hand there signal there in there. Huh? Yeah, I'd say I'm fully out. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say I'm fully out. Scenarios. Up. No more scenarios. We're out of scenarios. Has Islam held you back in your career? No, no. The opposite. Good answer. Yeah. Very good answer. Yeah. Sometimes the opposite, we, asked, yeah. we asked MB that that same question. Yeah. He gave the complete opposite response. And he did have the opposite response. Really. He's very. He's still very thankful for it, though. I mean, like yeah, you know, course, he's, he's not not, not, in a regret, not in a regretful way no, at all. No, no. Yeah, I mean, because uh, it doesn't it doesn't say that you can't go travelling. Doesn't say you can't teach your skills. So you're you're okay. I mean, I- if anything, I, I obviously stopped doing women's hair. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I I'm, I used to it's enjoy cutting women's now. hair. Yeah, I used to enjoy cut women's hair, but you know, it's no greater loss. What about music? You know? Do you have music on the salon? No, I don't. Has that been a tough process? 
Uh, I think at the time it was a little bit difficult, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, because we're both into our music. But I think when you get understanding, anything is easy. You know, exactly. when you when you understand why and how it affects you, your mind, your control, your balance in life, I think that's when you can finally say, you know what, fine, I, I'm going to put it to the side. You know, um, a lot of people ask us in a salon why we don't play music. Mm -hmm. And it's as simple as saying, you know, you have to understand that music provides a synthetic energy in the salon. And I always used to say to the people or, or, or even my employees that or other employee or other people in the industry, how do you feel when you turn the music off at the end of the day? And they used to say, oh, I love that feeling. Mm. You know, when it just goes silent. I go, yeah, 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 yeah. So what makes you need it in the first place? You see, the only positive ions that we want to create in the salon environment is the relation between yourself and the client. And then the other employee and their client. And then the other and their client. To the point where actually the whole salon then starts to have an open conversation, which actually brings the atmosphere sky high. Rather than using a synthetic energy like music, to create that energy which in fact if you turn it off all your energy stops yeah so you're kind of using that as a as a catalyst um to to have good energy you know that's true man i remember you you basically said the same thing sam said i remember when i asked sam the same question some time back and he said i said what do you say to people when they say you know why haven't you got music on and he, and he said that I will just turn around and say, what's wrong with having conversations? And that's true. Yeah, like, yeah. And uh, that. I'd rather promote conversation than promote like everyone listening to music. I think that's a beautiful thing, man. I, I, I love the fact that like, you know, when I go to your shop, I'm an, I'm an avid customer now. Yeah. Um, and even like the stuff that you guys do have on, a lot of the times like on the TV, there's, um, there's them, them nature shows like about like uh, animals and stuff. You know those, uh, I'm trying to remind you guys of what programs you've got. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, sometimes, Josh, you put on a, a couple of documentaries um, oh, yeah, throughout yeah. the time yeah. of Men's Spy, haven't you? Absolutely. What, like, sort of trying to, not, I'm not gonna, uh, he hates this, this, this topic, but of conspiracy-based. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, he's, he's sensitive around the topic. So, <laughs> I mean, Do you know what? You're just passionate about the topic. It's, well, I'm not, I'm not so, well, I think it's important to, to under, again, understand, you know, some of these theories and topics um, Any theory against music. Just going back, theories just that you find particularly interesting. Well, like the flat Earth. I'm sure it's the answer. We're going to go into it. It's a it's a highly it's a highly demanded topic we by, had, our, by our message, viewers. We had a message from NASA. Though, we had a message we? from NASA. Really? No yeah. way. Really? Yeah. What did they say? They were listening to it at I NASA HQ. You. Hmm? I can't tell you what they said. What did they say? It's flat. No. Oh. Because I mentioned NASA and so what's your what's your verdict? Have you looked into it? Well, I've never seen. I haven't seen the world from a distance. So what can I say? So what you, you have what no opinion on it? Well, I mean, <laughs> the, all I've seen is an earth that is flat, <laughs> you know? What do you mean? Well, I haven't seen the earth round of you. So what's your, what's Have you your, gone around the world? Have you gone opinion? on the world? What's the verdict? Well, yeah, from what I can see, visibly, it's flat, yeah. I haven't been around the world. I mean, I've been around based the world, what, but I haven't Based on just your, what you've visually seen, is it with your own eyes? Or yeah, 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 of course. Documentaries? Yeah, of course, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I've, 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 you know, watched loads of that stuff. I, I tend to not watch too much because yeah, it can what difference is it going to make to my life? Yeah. Right. Yeah. The so only difference it's going to make to my life is that if I'm being deceived or not. You and guess what? Trust. It doesn't matter because I'm going six foot deep at the end. That's so true. that's all that matters. You know, that's the reality, isn't it? doesn't matter if it's round, flat, square, oblong. You're going six foot deep. Into the earth. Oblong is a shape I haven't heard in a while. Yeah, well. Is there a theory of oblong earth? Prism, maybe. Prism. Hec Prism. Hec hectagon. Sphere. Spherical. S yeah, I think there is definitely a theory that it's spherical. Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah there's a big I've theory. As well, yeah. It's quite a popular one. Um, there's also I a big popular so theory of evolution. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's that's true. I, 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 I don't uh, um, have an opinion on it, man. That, uh, on the earth being flat thing, I, just have, I have zero opinion. I tried to ask John. I don't really get a you clear. You sound like you're scared in case they'll uh, inbox you again. I, I, actually, the inbox we got was actually very nice. Um, okay. They, they 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 were being very nice about yeah. it. Actually, it's a fan. Yeah, yeah. Ask for your address. 
Not at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I genuinely, I, I have zero opinion. Like, I can't. I haven't researched enough to tell you that it's flat or. or, or yeah. What? Well, no. Right. I, right. Until prove until it Sam, to me. Yeah. Prove it to me then. Prove me if it's flat or if it's round. Give me. Show me something. Show me something. So you've got no opinion on it either. I can have an opinion. Until I live Sam, on the earth. I travel sh- on a flat surface, up and down maybe, but you won't see me poking outwards mm. or downwards. But isn't that what gravity is about? I don't know. The only so thing you is, tell me. I, I, never, I never had an opinion on it. I always thought it was round until Sam told me about this theory. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. I don't know what you're saying, Josh. Well, I mean, yeah. Where do you get your fashion sense from, Josh? I love your fashion sense. <laughs> uh, all over. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean... Do you get comments on it a lot? I, there probably is no source of where I get my sense from. You don't from. necessarily look at a magazine and think, ooh. No, nah, not particularly. I look at society. Yeah. Okay. So, and I incorporate what I like and what I dislike. <laughs> Big fan what of those you? hats. <laughs> Sorry? What about you? River <laughs> Island? Uh, I just kind of chuck on what... Probably. That's supply and demand, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean... That's... Um, not a fan of it, are you, Josh? Doesn't, 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 look doesn't, like doesn't look like he likes it at all. Uh, yeah, it's cool. It's basic. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> about his trousers. Talk about his trousers. Look at his little trousers yeah, he's got. Yeah, Zara, 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 yeah. Yeah. They are Zara. Yeah, yeah. 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 already. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. do you know he owns a, um, a fashion label? Yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously. He hate, but he, why don't you? He, he, <laughs> he owns his own. We have a handler. We have a fashion designer who works um, alongside us, and he does a lot of the uh, the fashiony things. <laughs> Uh, I'd, I'd probably Fashion-y. consider myself more of a brander. Brander. Yeah. Brander. Yeah. I mean, so um, t- there's a who <laughs> is it that said? Who is it that said? Um, uh, it was a guy who ra- runs a company called Shreds. Yeah. Yeah. Protein company, and uh, he had an interview on Forbes, and they said they said, "Oh, you, uh, what is it like running a fitness company?" He said, uh, "I don't run a fitness company. Um, I run a branding company, and the thing that happened to be branding is." Uh, fitness products. Uh, he's very good at branding. He doesn't necessarily. He's not. A, he's he's not got any kind of uh, qualifications as far as wearing fitness. And that's how I see it, Zaha, man. Like I, I love branding. I love the nature of branding. I love mm. pushing myself out. I love marketing my stuff. Um, I, but I, I definitely wouldn't rely. I think I wouldn't rely on myself to solely come up with the. Uh, uh, designs or the clothing because I think my business would suffer. Uh, you have to know your weaknesses and your strengths, and then your weaknesses. I think you have to bring those people in. It was Gary V who said that there's three um, three things you need to run business, and you're not probably not going to be all free. And the ones that you're not, you have to bring in. And one of them was I think like a creative person. Um, I can't remember the second one. And the third one he said was a, a person who's like essentially like very organized, very good with numbers, and very like. Um, yeah, so you basically know? you need an entrepreneur, you need a manager, and you need a technician. Yeah, so well, I think he said like a more of like a, not an accountant, but a, like an accounts manager of some sort. Uh, like a, a, a more kind of pen to paper kind of person. Uh, Organised in the head, yeah. Yeah, manager. Uh, yeah. And uh, and so I think like it's true, man. You can't just assume that you are all three. No, as no, a no. Person. You'd be definitely I think it, it talks about that in that book, the E-Myth, E-Myth yeah. that, I, um, that I read. You know, there are three types of, of business, per, or three types, um, as you mentioned, that you need to run a successful business. Now, if you try and be all three of them, you can't split your time up. So you need someone who's entrepreneurial, who takes the brand further, and who's innovative with the brand. You need the manager who's controlling the brand and the, the, the employees and the organization and the accounts, and then obviously you need your technicians, i.e. the employees who do the actual, you know, craft. And what would you say you are? Out of the three? All three, <laughs> to be honest. But we just agreed that yeah, you can't no, be aware. I know, I know, I know. Uh, entrepreneur. Yeah? Yeah, clearly, because I want to move things forward. Um, you come across really creative to me. I yeah. suppose you can be creative and still be entrepreneurial, you've got though. You've got to, you've got to, y- with those three in mind as well, you've got to understand each and every single category. You've got to understand, obviously, your craft, first yep. of all. You've got to understand your manageability, your timekeeping, the controlling of your staff, um, until, obviously, you then hire more employees, mm-hmm. you hire a manager, and then you can then be the entrepreneurial who takes that avenue, who leads people forward, who leads people into opportunity, and who leads people towards more success so you have to essentially it to be, in order to be an entrepreneur you definitely uh, have to have like traits of all three in you yeah, but yeah. you just you should know which one you're strongest at absolutely yeah. Yeah. i'd agree with that man although yeah. i'm very weak on certain parts of those but um 
Hey, we all live and we learn, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We live, we live as the learners. Some just live. Some do live. Yeah, some don't learn. There's a lot. There's uh, uh, a person in university told me. Um, th- there's, so there's a guy in my university who was going through. Um, <laughs> Why am I making it? Why am I making the podcast so negative? Are you about to tell a really, really sad story again? Uh, kind of, but uh, listen, <laughs> it's not that sad. It's not that sad because it's just a quote, and then it's in it. Go on, go on, go on, go on. So he was going through depression, but he said that um, he said something that was really sad, um, and he said that uh, George Orwell is that an author? Yeah, George Orwell, I think, made a quote that said, um, "You can you, you can either decide to live." in this world or you can decide to just exist mm. and he and um yeah. or something along the lines and this friend of mine said to me i guess i'm just choosing to exist and that's what he said to me because he just he was really sad and he was like i'm happy existing now and i felt so sad like and that quote is it, yeah. it's very true you can live like make the most out of you being here in terms of dunya and dean um although that guy who wrote that quote i don't think he was muslim um <laughs> in fact i'm more certain um or you can just choose to exist and, and just let the world pass you by. Yeah. Plodding along, I think they commonly call it in layman terms. Yeah. Plodding along. Plodding along. Are you happy plodding along, Sam? How do you feel about life? What's your, you know, I guess, not just Dean, but Dunya as well. What, what, what do you want? What do you want in life, Sam? What do you want? What do I want? What do you want? Dunya terms. Looks like you want to be asleep. Just what do you want? What do you want? What do you, are you happy plodding along? Would you say you're a person that plods along? Or would you p- say you're a person who's ambitious? I definitely have ambition, yeah. Yeah. For sure. I, um, I just want to uh, see things grow. I just want to see my teams grow, my shops grow. Mm. Um, and um, that's for me that I want to see. I want to see other, people, um, other people's strengths come to light. I see so many talented people um, who deserve to have the limelight. I want to see, I want to see people who work with me and for me excel and do really well mm. um i take it you get some joy out of that then in that case oh Obviously, i love it clearly. there's nothing better if you if especially if you put i mean you're quite a so you're quite an influential uh person right i mean i've seen people that pretty much copy you with a lot of things that you do you know yeah especially on uh, on next we um we've discussed this a few times. If if people are are watching you and looking for inspiration from you, you've got to make sure whatever you're doing is hundred percent. Is hundred percent yeah. because otherwise some, someone's going to copy and implement what you're doing. And if you're doing something which isn't is n- is no good, yeah, and they implement yeah. that, it's going to be it's just going to be negative. Well, it is negativity course, yeah. breeds negativity, isn't it? Would well, you ever see it as a offensive that someone was to copy you? Nah, it's got to be flattering. Surely, yeah. I don't, I, I don't think flattering, but what if it's somewhat like taking the mic a bit? Well, if someone's like, taking a mick, then you've got to assess their intentions. Yeah. You know, that's that's not down to you, you know. If someone's taking a give mick... Me a sna- give me a scenario. Because you can have yeah. someone who c- buys the same shoes as you and you think, oh, maybe I've inspired them. Yeah. And then you can have someone who's maybe copied your whole branding of, 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 of a hair salon. Because I've, see, I've seen both those things happen. Mm. Really? And how do you feel when someone copies I, your whole branding? So, do you know what? We... We see um, we see people who are maybe inspired and influenced by our brand, mm-hmm. and sometimes it's done in like a not in a not in a subtle way, in just in a, in a clear cut. Uh, but openly, isn't it? Openly, I'm going to steal your your ideas, mm-hmm. and you when when you see it, I don't I don't I look at it as just like I don't know I don't think it's it's very important to be unique out here, especially when you're building a brand and building like you, your own what you want to do. So if you're looking at next man and just copying exactly what they're doing. But not even really showing much love and, and anything towards them, and you're just copying. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really admire that too much. I think it's very important to be being unique with yourself, with your, with your fashion, with your character, with your business, with with everything. I think being yourself and being unique is very important. So just copying someone, I, d- I don't really, I don't really admire that. I think you can take um, uh, inspiration for um, you can like. There's a very blurry line between inspiration and. Um, uh, imitation mm. and I think that as a as someone who like that makes YouTube videos um, I know a, I, I know a lot of YouTubers who say that they don't even watch other YouTubers um, and the reason being that I find it really hard to watch other YouTubers now as well especially ones that I like watching because because you love their content so much it's like subliminally you start like recreating their content mm. and and your, your your followers can see it and it's almost like you don't want to be that but it's, it's a beautiful thing because you're so inspired by them but like at the same time, it's tough because you don't want to become somebody else. So I'll give you an mm. example. I my favorite, <coughs> one of my favorite YouTubers um, has always been a guy called Just Rain. 
He's an Indian guy from, in, from Canada. And his comedy is just hilarious, yeah? And w- when I watch his comedy, I, I think to myself, like, oh, man, he just gets me on a comedic level. Like, that's my type of comedy. Do you know what I mean? And then what I found is that people started commenting on my YouTube videos, like, oh, man, like, uh, this is jokes. Like, um, you, you're just like Just Rain or like... Um, this sound like oh man you should like do some you should do like a collab with just rain and one or two people would be like oh like this is like really similar to just rain but they were saying it in a way where it's like it's it's like weirdly like your comedy is quite similar and i found that my intention was never to to do that but i found that because i watched him and, and like was so inspired by his comedy <clears throat> or his videos i like started implementing it without even doing it on purpose. And so I had to legitly stop watching his videos mm. because I was so inspired by them. But I thought to myself, I thought to myself for a second, imagine if he watched my video, mm. what How would he think? think? He and I think he would feel like, yo, this guy is... And I wasn't Having even... And I wasn't line by line copying jokes. So I wasn't like, get, like making videos that he was making at all. Do you show love to him? As in publicly, like I will openly say like, I love this guy's okay, stuff. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. That's cool. But... but um, but yeah there's a line and, isn't there you don't want to cross it there's a yeah. line yeah and now I get messages from people um, and people say to me like oh man like when I watch your stuff like I feel like you get me I feel like we're so similar and then I've myself noticed a few people uh, make similar kind of content and I'm at first um, like uh what is the, what's the word that we're saying um, not inspired but flattered but then I'm a bit like ah like i almost feel like what i'm coming up with is getting stolen but then i was in that position where i was kind of like that and my intention was to do it out of love and now it's becoming blurry so i think there's a blurry line Mm -hmm. and um you need to snap yourself out of it when you when you if you find that you're crossing that line i'd I'd say just don't think about it just don't think about it keep doing what you're doing um and again i guess being an innovator as well you gotta let that time come don't try and force something new when a new idea comes Write it down, mm. capitalize on it, embrace it. If it works, good. If it doesn't, no trouble. Yeah. You know? It's like I've done so many fantastic haircuts that no one has seen before. And then a year later, everyone's do it or everyone does it straight after, you know? And it's kind of like, well, you can't stop people. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't want to stop expressing yourself. Of course. Yeah, that's so exactly, exactly, like, exactly, exactly. Come on, man. You just got to go, you know what? Cool. Got to keep it me. moving. Got to keep it moving. I know what I do. And that's it. So does that mean you don't like you don't like it if someone tries to not copy one of your haircuts but is inspired by it and does their own version of it? Would you like that? Or if I they think, did that, you would know you what? prefer like a, maybe like a just little as shout I, out? Just as I asked you, um, if if you show love, then I think it's good, isn't it? Do you know yeah. what I mean? I think it's it is nice because you know it's it's just it's love, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's it's compassion. You know, it's just showing that people appreciate what you're doing, how you're doing it. And, you know, they want to just make an example of what what you've done for them, you know, to be able to provide someone with some inspiration that they Mm. can just sort of go, look, this is my effort. This is my go. Okay, so we're back. and Josh is gone. Yeah, Josh is gone. And those those of you who are watching on YouTube probably can see that Josh is gone. Those of you who are listening on podcast app are probably just thinking, oh, they just faded out of that conversation. (laughs) Now they're talking again, but just... Um, so Josh, uh, being the busy man that he is, has some meetings in Central, doesn't he, or yeah. some kind of appointments? Yeah. And so um, we did, we did, we did say goodbye to him, but just not formally on air. Off air, we prayed and he went. Yeah, it was yeah. nice. Alhamdulillah, it was nice. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, it was really nice to have Josh on the show. It was good to have Josh on. Yeah, really nice. I'm sure he added some nice value there. Yeah. Some some wisdom and inspiration. He's a very unique character, isn't he, Josh? Very unique. <laughs> I think we were just saying we were just saying off air now that um, it it does change the dynamic a lot when we do have people on air. Yeah. Actually, I think it would be lovely to hear from uh, the people that are listening whether like they like prefer the ones where it's just us to or whether we have a, when we have a guest. Um, so feedback is obviously always appreciated, but it does change the dynamic a lot, I suppose, because we have a thing going with Freshly Grand and we're so used to it. So when somebody else is joined, as much as uh, it's amazing, uh, but it's a different kind. It turns into a different kind of show or th- episode. It changes, yeah. I mean, um, like, like we were just discussing, when it's just you and me, obviously we're just discussing random things. I think. And we have we have a bit more of a laugh and stuff. And there's someone else there. It's almost not like an interview, mm. but it, the attention goes on them. It does change the dynamic. But it's good though. I, I personally think it's nice to have 
a mix of both. I like it would, yeah. it would it would be nice to hear what people think. So people drop us an email or jump jump on our Instagram and let us know. Yeah, I might put up a post on like Instagram or something. Actually, no, I'm not gonna put up a post about it specifically. If you're listening to this and you have time to give us some feedback, feedback very welcome. We're very and we'd very much so appreciate it. Absolutely. How often do you get your haircut, Sam? Owning as you as an owner of a barber shop? Every few days or every week. You, it's important, right? Yeah, it's important to me. What about you? Once a week. That's that's good going for someone who doesn't own a barber shop. Yeah, I, ideally I would like to do it more, but it's just not practical for me. Every three days is perfect. Really? But we're, not, you a, find? we're not in a perfect world, so whether I can get it done every every uh, three days is uh, it's not always or not always realistic. But that's from, obviously because I've got a beard and stuff and a short haircut. When it grows out, I'm very aware of it. I feel fr- I feel fresh and clean when it's clean when it's when it's freshly cut. Yeah, I have to lie. Uh, whenever I see you, you got a fresh trim. I'm when gonna. when um, I, I'm the same, like because I've got a beard and stuff. Mm. If it like. After a couple of days, like I just feel like I need it neatened up, and when I look messy, I look really messy, kind of thing yeah. because of the beard and stuff. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When you've got a beard and it's it's like a wild bit of hair, it's important to for me anyway. It's it's important to keep your cheeks clean and neat. Yeah. The first time I spoke to you, I said in Gambia, I said you just grow corners back a little bit. Your exact words were, "I'd love to have you on my chair." You did say that. What chair? You meant the barber chair. You took that very lightly and you you made me, well, you made me shape you up, made me cut your hair, you made me do a few things out there, didn't you? You shaped me up in, in Gambia. Just shape you? up? Do you remember when in Gambia you, oh, I I was well, how much up. do we talk about Gambia on the podcast? I oh, know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> As it comes up. <laughs> get over it. Yeah, get over it. You went Gambia <laughs> together. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Is it? I know. Let's not talk. Nah, I why not? Ah, oh, bro, we don't want to I like almost brought it up when Josh was here. Really? Yeah, you so brought it up when MB was here. Yeah. Really? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we always just go back to Gambia. It's like we have no other experiences together. We don't really. Do you remember the time we went to Joe and the Juice together? Oh, we never talked about that. I know. We did go to Joe. We went and got a couple of juice. Uh, was it before I opened the juice shop, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And you, s- you said, I have to take you to this uh, juice shop. You'll really like it. And I did really like it. Yeah. Um, you had a juice and a coffee. Uh, I did have a juice and a coffee. Oh, oh I, I did. Okay, so so basically, you know how I'm start- You know how we had that conversation last week about juicing? Mm. So I've deci- I decided to like... Get on this juicing hype. Uh, Have you had a chance to watch that um, Fat Sick and Nearly Dead yet? I haven't. No. I'll remind. I'll send you a reminder to watch that because it will. You will like it. But Thanks, Karen. I appreciate that. Uh, I just didn't. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I thought, look, let me start juicing, and I want to be more healthy. And I speak to my wife about it. So really late at night, me and my wife popped to Tesco, and uh, we bought like loads of fruit and veg. And um, what well, <laughs> when I say loads, we spent fifteen pounds on fruit and veg, but. If you know how cheap fruit and veg is, that's a lot of money. Like, mm-hmm. in the sense that, like, you get, like, a whole pack of, like, stuff, like, a one sort of fruit for, like, 75p and stuff. So, it's really cheap. So, we spent £15. We've got, like, an entire bag, grocery bag of, like, loads of fruit and veg for juicing. Went home, and we have a Nutribullet at home, and we also have a juicer. Okay. And I remember you telling me, don't Nutribullet it because it, like, you don't get all the nutrients out of it, and it becomes a bit of a smoothie. So, use the juicer. So, went home. I haven't used a juicer in months. So, cleaned out the juicer. And I'm here getting ready to juice up this, like, all this fruit and veg that we just bought, fresh fruit and veg. My wife's watching me, and I'm at this, like, state now where I'm like, all right, cool, I'm going to impress my wife. I'm going to juice her up something good, yeah? So um, I, I connect with the parts of the juicer, I wash the juicer, she's watching me, plug it in, turn it on, chuck the veg in, like, turn the dial to start the juicer, and the juicer's not starting. Right. And I'm like, no. So um, I'm like, all right, cool might be the fuse we changed the fuse didn't work um so our juice is not working <laughs> really Bro, so, so what happened to all the fruit and veg that you put in so uh, that fruit and veg i put into the nutribullet okay and it was awful you made a smoothie yeah and it wasn't and we put too much ginger in and so it's really like what, what did you make yeah you're very, it makes you it hurts your throat doesn't it yeah i looked at uh, uh we made like a there was like a bunch of stuff in it like but there's a lot of ginger in it Especially, what? Well, how did you get prepare the ginger with the, the Nutribullet? You just shoved it all in the Nutribullet, bro. Really? I don't know how to do it. I don't, I'm not a ju- I'm not a producer like you, bro. I'm not a producer I'm either, sure. but I know how to no, juice. Like, I know how to juice. juice. Yeah, but it's, just, it's not about being a professional or anything. It's just <laughs> it's common. Isn't it common sense? Well, what, what, what do you mean? No, like, it's, no it's, there is a bit to it to be, but juicing there is it is so different. Like juicing and, and smoothies and Nutribullets, there is like a massive difference. I used well, to think, yeah, of course, and I'm really upset. Yeah, I have all these fruit and vegetables at home right now. Why don't you just get? A, why don't you get a new juicer? You don't have to spend a fortune on. You can spend probably like 30, 40 quid and get like an okay juicer. Oh for really? Home. Yeah, it's a good investment, I might, man. I might do that because. Or if you really like, what I really highly recommend is getting a cold press machine. What's that? Um, 
it um it will give you even better quality juice than a normal juicer really yeah is that what you got but you guys use something like industrial thing obviously because it's now like well we use well yeah we use cold press yeah but you can get like the machines we use you can get that for your home Oh, okay. We d- we've I'm just got a couple of them. I mean, rather than, sp- you can, you can, well, you can spend like easily spend fifteen grand on a juicer. Fifteen thousand pounds. Easily. No. Easily. What does it do? It's like an industrial one. So and like, does it like clean itself out or something? Nah. You still have to clean it. You can like you know in these industrial things like even coffee machines you can you spend like fifteen grand on a coffee machine. Can I just say how many parts of a juicer are there? Like when you have to clean it out, I have to literally take it take it apart. There's like five different parts. You See have to clean. that's. What well, ones I use are like the lazy man ones where you put the juice, you put the fruit through it yeah. and all the pulp comes out straight away. So yeah. you never, well, you do have to clean it, but you don't have to clean out like a, con, uh, like a, a segment of like loads of pulp. It kind of like it empties it out. Do you know what I mean? I think my one has that, but I don't know. It's weird. It has like a little off bin air, thing, we'll yeah. discuss further and I'll maybe send you a, a, a link for a good one. No problem. But yeah, so I invested in some fruit and veg and uh, unfortunately I haven't been able to make a juicer. My sister has a juicer. She doesn't live too far, so I might in the meantime. But I, it sounds like it makes more sense to just grab a, grab a juicer. It makes sense. Just jump on online and, and order one and probably get one by tomorrow. By tomorrow? Oh, uh, August, um, August have some. I've got August down the road. Yeah. I can get one to buy today. You, c- you could, but you say all this. I bet you by the next time we chat, you won't have. I could be juicing tonight. I could be all juiced up. You look like you are juiced up. Nah, not at all, man. Not at all. However, <laughs> bro, so I, we, I went to his wedding this morning, yeah? Mm. And I got my suit, like, not even that long ago. And, like, it's, alhamdulillah, but it's, it's really tight for me now. Is it? Bro, it's a joke. Where, around the gut area or? No, Where? like my legs have grown okay. and like, so now it's too tight for my trousers and on the my blazer, shoulder. like I feel like, I mean, I'm not, but like it was a really nice achievement. That's good. It felt like a really good achievement, like sick. My suit doesn't fit. However, do you have to get a new suit? Expensive suit, suit going to have to get a new one. Yeah, that's a pain. I have about three or four different suits. Alhamdulillah, it's not end of the world. Mashallah. But I mean, I had two in it for like things here and there. Mashallah, four suits. Mashallah. Maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. T- and uh, yeah. Yeah. But you, do you, I don't wear suits much though. I don't even own a suit. Really? Mm. Never have done. It's strange, uh, isn't it? Yeah, well, I know people like I have a friend who has about eight suits. He was telling me the other day. We just we just end up in a suit conversation. He's a chauffeur, so he has to. I've never been able to have a suit conversation, which is a shame. What else have you got something interesting to tell me? I haven't got anything interesting to tell you. Unfortunately, we don't have current events. Unfortunately, we don't have a producer. I, unfortunately, we're falling into shambles. We're not falling into shambles, but we we've made this episode work. We've made I it work. So. It hasn't. Well, inshallah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be good. We've had obviously Josh come down. Um, it's two options: not do a podcast or do a podcast. So inshallah, this is gonna be a good po- podcast. We've got no red. It's weird that we can't look over there and see red, <laughs> and he's typing whatever whatever he's doing, <laughs> whatever he does. <laughs> Me throughout, know, yeah. throughout the f- <laughs> you see him do, he does things yeah. I, I never ask I never, never will ask just what producer, he's doing th- producer things isn't he's, it he's just, yeah he's producing yeah. so is, is, I'm looking forward to seeing him next week I'm looking forward to seeing him as well it, it, you, you realise you don't realise how good something is till it's gone I know am I being negative again you've you like to bring things down I do I've had a negative f- uh, flex this entire just before we finish the podcast have you got any really depressing stories that you want to bring up I'm all out of depressing <laughs> stories what about yourself? Nothing. No? Nah. In that case, should we call it a day? A dizzy? A what? A dizzy. What's a dizzy? A day. Come on, Sam. You can't say that you didn't used to use slang like that. No one ever has ever used slang like that. Yeah, a dizzy. Di- um, like, what's what's up with the hizzy in the dizzy? His dizzy. Got some, I see you got some Alhamdulillah custom shoes on there. Alhamdulillah. What does that say on the side? NYC. Guess oh, where I got them from? Um, Morocco. No, I come from New York. I come from New York. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for listening so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so. Can you, <laughs> can you do it, Sam? Energy, energy, energy. You've had no sleep. I don't know you've what. You've got no excuses for being yeah, whatever you've been today. I don't sleep much, you know. You do. Oh, really? You don't know how much I sleep. Do you it's watch? True. Me? I've done. You have done. <laughs> no, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I don't need loads of sleep, but I need I need a night's sleep. You need a good night's sleep. But it's like, it's so like, even for instance, you training, like I'm sure people have recommended to you, advised to you, like the sleep is such a massive part of even mm. getting bigger. That you need, your body needs the rest, man. It's yeah, just important. I hate to say moany, but you know, I'd, this is why I'm sensitive about it. If someone, if someone interrupts my sleep, I'm sensitive about it because that's, it affects your day. I've heard a couple of stories about, yeah. You've, I'm sure you have. Yeah. 
you you do like your sleep. With that being said, thank you so much for listening to the podcast today, guys. Guys, Sam's tired and um, yeah. Make the war. Make the war for us and him. Uh, there's a lot of big things coming up for Freshly Guarded, which we've had some really intriguing emails and phone calls recently. Yep. Um, so I'm sure there's a lot in the pipeline which you guys will be excited about. We're excited about. Um, and inshallah, we'll see you guys next week when, when Sam has had a good sleep and when I have a bit more positivity. In thank you so much for watching, listening and supporting us. Please make sure you follow us on Instagram. The Instagram page is freshly underscore grounded. Yeah. Please follow it. And maybe like Sam it. Will, maybe Sam will put some stories up in it. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum.